So, dear friends, uh, welcome to WMO and uh, welcome to the scientific uh, lecture that we are going to soon soon have. And, um, and I'm happy to see so many science experts uh, around here and some people from the from the missions uh, as well. And uh, and the WMO is the is the home of uh, of IPCC. IPCC was uh, founded by WMO at the first. Uh, World Climate Research uh, Climate Pro uh, Conference in, in 79, and, and uh, thereafter the first IPCC report was published in 1988, and uh, there was a need for five uh, uh, assessment reports before the Paris Agreement was signed. And, and, uh, and I think that IPCC has been a success story, uh, and, uh, and the message of science uh, community was finally, finally heard, and. Uh, and uh, now we are in the process to give a boost to the Paris uh, Agreement uh, implementation. And we will soon have uh, Ambassador Di Alba from uh, uh, New York uh, with us. Uh, he's he's uh, in charge of the United Nations uh, Secretary General Guterres uh, Climate Summit, which will be uh, uh, organized for the heads of state uh, on the 23rd of uh, uh, September uh, this year. I'm in charge of uh, leading the science group of, uh, of, of that, uh, that summit, and, and uh, we are bringing the message of uh, science community to that uh, summit. It's based on, on, on the work of uh, WMO, UNEP, uh, uh, Global Carbon Project, and uh, IPCC, and we are going to have two fresh uh, IPCC reports uh, available for by the, by the summit, uh, one dealing with terrestrial ecosystems and one dealing with uh, oceans and, uh, and cryosphere. And uh, in, in general, WMO is just that the process to uh, carry out a major reform, and as part of the reform, uh, we are opening the doors more for, for uh, uh, scientific community, and, and we are going to establish two new scientific uh, bodies. Uh, we will have uh, one scientific advisory panel, which will consist of world-leading scientific experts who are going to initiate new things, and. Uh, and give, uh, give a boost to WMO uh, visionary development, and, and then we will have a research board which is dealing with uh, science uh, services uh, interface. And we have hired our first ever uh, chief scientist, Pavel Kabat, who is uh, with us today to promote, uh, promote uh, science engagement in, in WMO activities. And the success, our uh, future success, uh, really depends on, 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 on science and innovation, and that's, that's why it's going to be very, very important for us. We're also uh, going to engage private sector more in our, our work, and, uh, and we expect to get some uh, in innovative uh, uh, feed uh, from, from that uh, sector too. And uh, WMO community has been very much contributing to the work of uh, IPCC uh, we are carrying out the measurements, and we have been setting standards for the measurements, and that's why we have been able to trace uh, fairly small uh, signals of uh, climate. It's not so small anymore, but, uh, but anyhow, to, to, to find the signal from temperature and uh, are, are other parameters data, you have to have uh, high-quality measurements. And we have also been enhancing the greenhouse gas monitoring worldwide, and uh, today we have uh, 375 uh, Global Atmosphere Watch uh, Stations, which is a basis of, uh, of ground-based uh, greenhouse gas monitoring network. We are also dealing with uh, satellite measurements, and uh, our, our members are also playing an important role in, in climate uh, science. And we are happy to have also uh, Thomas Stocker here to today. He was, uh, he was uh, chairing uh, the uh, uh, technical support unit of uh, of working group one at the last uh, assessment, and uh, and despite of that heavy burden, he's still alive and uh, and kicking, and, uh, and we will hear what, what what he has been doing since uh, he survived the IPCC business a uh, few years ago. And uh, then we have uh, uh, Ambassador Di Alba here. He's he's taking care of this uh, uh, climate summit. Uh, uh, preparation for uh, for Secretary General Guterres, and tomorrow and on Friday we will have all of the heads of UN agencies uh, here in Geneva, and uh, one of the themes of our, our meeting is going to be climate. Now we give them a climate uh, science uh, presentation, and uh, 
tell what the scientific advisory group of the summit is, uh, is, is, is doing. With these words, once, uh, once again, welcome to WMO, and, uh, and uh, I hope that you will feel more and more home-like home here and, uh, and, um, and, and I'm eager to hear the lecture of uh, Thomas. And, uh, and first, I would like to give the uh, floor to uh, Ambassador Dialba, who is, uh, who is going to tell us uh, about the Climate Summit. Welcome. Thank you, thank you very much, Professor Talas. And, uh, good afternoon. It's uh, indeed a pleasure to be with you this afternoon. Uh, and let me let me share with you some uh, ideas and, and pieces of information about the preparation of the summit that may be of interest uh, for you. Uh, I would start by highlighting the importance that uh, Secretary General. Antonio Guterres give to science and the reports uh, that are have, have been produced in the recent uh, years and recent weeks and months uh, highlighting the urgency of action to deal with uh, climate change. Uh, he has been extremely concerned about uh, the finding of those reports and uh, because of that he has decided to, to call for a summit in September this year. The summit will take place on the 23rd of September uh, in the framework of the high-level uh, week of the General Assembly. Uh, it's going to be part of the main events uh, because we are uh, going to have five summits during that week from the, the 23rd of September. But the one uh, I'm in charge of preparing the one on climate, I think it is the key to uh, unlock uh, some of the, the commitments and understanding on the following uh, summit that will take place. One of them is uh, an overview of the overall uh, sustainable development agenda, which is going to be conducted through the High Political Forum on Sustainable Development. But coming back to the concerns of the Secretary General about the the, the reports, and I would highlight in particular the report of the IPCC on 1.5 degrees. He has uh, clearly understood that he needed to sound the, the alarm and call on leaders to, to, to uh, enhance their own uh, NDCs, their commitments. But at the same time, uh, we need to show the way on which it can be done. And for that purpose, it's uh, extremely important the collaboration and the support that the WMO is, is given to this, to this process uh, together with other institutions. We have identified nine areas and I would be very happy to share with you the, the chart that explains how the, the process is being organized. Uh, nine areas of work and uh, we have um, uh, asked uh, uh, one, two, three countries maximum to co-lead on each of these uh, uh, work streams with the support of uh, relevant institutions uh, within the, the system so that we can identify concrete actions. Because this summit, the Secretary General wants to, to organize it in a relatively quite different way as previous uh, uh, summits and events. Uh, being aware of the need to increase ambition and to, to, to be very specific on, on the proposals that can be presented to member states. He has decided uh, to call on uh, not only governments but also the private uh, sector, civil society in general, local authorities also, uh, to come with plans, not with the speeches. Uh, plans that will include uh, concrete measures that could be implemented immediately after, uh, actions that could be follow up by the system, uh, so it's not just a, a, an event on which we will have the traditional statements and, and, and as happened in, uh, in other occasions, no follow-up. This time what the, the Secretary General wants is to have an agenda for action, uh, an agenda that will commit uh, himself and the system to support and uh, move the system from negotiations 
to implementation. Implementation of commitments that have been already uh, presented by member states, but the commitment I will highlight that still need to be substantially enhanced. The areas on which we are working, as you can imagine, are the, the, the areas which have uh, showed some movement and, 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 and need uh, to be encouraged, whether we are talking about the uh, tr industry transition or whether we are talking about resilience and adaptation, uh, nature-based solutions, it's, it's an area in which there is a, a lot of movement. Also, we are working on infrastructure, cities and local governments. We are also uh, uh, working uh, very much on, on uh, a mitigation strategy that will focus on the major emitters, but will also include uh, countries that may become major emitters in the short term and recognize uh, smaller emitters, but with very ambitious plan. Uh, we are also working with uh, youth mobilization and certainly with uh, climate uh, finance. And finally, uh, we are all also going to be working on what we call the, the social and political agenda, on which we will pay greater attention to uh, issues related to health uh, and, uh, and jobs, uh, human rights in, in general. Uh, as I mentioned before, each of these coalitions is being asked to present concrete proposals. We will uh, have an opportunity to evaluate uh, those proposals in a meeting that uh, has been organized uh, by the United Arab Emirates and will take place in, in Abu Dhabi on the 30th of June this year and, and the 1st of July. And from there, we will be hopefully in a position uh, to enhance uh, these uh, initiatives and, uh, and, and put it in a, in a format, as I mentioned before, that will take the, uh, will constitute a plan of action. The last point I wanted to make uh, uh, for you is that uh, this whole exercise of uh, setting uh, these uh, tracks and building coalition between public and private sector, etc needs to be very closely followed up and, and supported by experts. And because of that, we have established two advisory groups uh, that uh, will uh, guide us in the process. One is uh, a group of, uh, on ambition on which we have identified a number of uh, experts on, on climate change uh, that uh, will help us in defining the uh, parameters or the, the, the uh, uh, methodology on which we will base the selection of, uh, of the proposals. And the second group uh, is uh, also very important, is a scientific advisory group, uh, co presided by Professor Talas with a, a group of uh, nine scientists, if I recall correctly, that will also be providing guidance to, to the overall process of identification of proposals and follow up uh, for the implementation of those proposals. These two uh, advisory groups are extremely useful, and uh, the work that you are doing here today uh, will also, uh, I think, fit very well in the, in the process of uh, preparation, because we need to, to make sure that we are identifying all the opportunities to encourage uh, participation, once again, public and private participation into the summit. Uh, just to give you an idea how far we are from what uh, we need to be is that uh, I can tell you that if we take all the commitments, all the NDCs that have been presented uh, to, uh, up to today, we will be about one third of what we need if we want to keep uh, the increase in the temperature uh, below 1.5. So that's the, the, the size of the challenge uh, that, uh, that we have. And I, uh, and I hope again that we will all work together to achieve a, a very positive result and, and a transformation of the, on the way we are dealing. Once again, moving from negotiations to uh, implementation. Negotiations for you that uh, follow the U UNFCCC will agree with me, have practically ended. Uh, there are very few issues to be uh, solved. Uh, basically, there is one issue pending, which is the uh, Article 6. Uh, on markets and a few technical details. 
So it is about time we all concentrate on implementing what we have uh, committed uh, to do. So thank you again for the invitation to be here, and I'll, I'll be very happy to share this information, and uh, probably also to tell you that uh, this information, together with the criteria that would be used to select proposals and the evolution of the work of each of the streams, is available in the in a web page uh, uh, within the, the the site of the United Nations, and, and can be li the link can be also shared with you so that uh, you can follow this process. Good. So uh, before uh, giving the floor to Thomas, I would like to still uh, ask uh, Pavel and uh, Detlev to say, say a few words, please. Very briefly, thank you, Petri. Thank you, Lifonso. I will say Lifonso because the world is small and what Ambassador Rabat didn't tell you is that he not only was Ambassador of Mexico to Vienna, where we collaborated, but he was also uh, behind one of the most important meetings in the climate discourse, which was Cancun. So that's something you to say. Thank you for that. Ladies and gentlemen, the colleagues, friends, uh, it is an exciting time at WMO for science. It's a dream what we are talking about. We are talking about expensive words which too many of you miss a lot. Integrated, seamless, earth system thinking. And we talk about observations, weather, climate, water environment, the whole bunch. And this is where WMO is going in helping and facilitating the community because WMO, of course, is not a research institution, helping the programs to go to the next level of this integrated system thinking. Not only on the academic way, but also in the way connecting as much as we can to the applications. We call it science for service. And to me, there is no better place in the world than WMO, which has this connection to both the academic science community and to the operations, which do have infrastructure to try it out. Of course, uh, this is something which can only be done because of the communities with us. And I am very privileged to um, welcome here again uh, one of the most prominent part of this community, which has been leading the World Climate Research Discourse for the last 40 years, called World Climate Research Program. We are uh, one of the three co-sponsors, and WMO am responsible for that, of this program, which has been uh, at the beginning of scientific substantiation of all the discourses which led to the IPCC reports and from that to the UNFCC discussions. I'm very pleased we have this week here the Joint Steering Science Committee of this program with the prominent scientists from, uh, I think it's about 12 or 13 countries here. And we have a new leadership here and uh, because this is a coincidence between this lecture and uh, the meeting, we decided and agreed to co-host the inaugural event of the public lecture series by this program. So I would like to welcome all colleagues from the Joint Science Committee of WCRP and specifically the chair of it, Professor Detlef Stammer, who will say a few words for the introduction before we go to Thomas, Thomas uh, presentation. Detlef. Yeah, thank you very much, Pavel, Pavel um, Mr. President, uh, Excellency de Alba. Um, uh, I really very much um, like to welcome you here. Um, in fact, on behalf of the World Climate Research Program, um, you have already heard um, a little bit about it. We have three sponsors, the World Meteorological Organization being one of them, um, the International Science Council, uh, a second, and the Inter, um, Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission, the third one. Um, the World Meteorological, uh, sorry, the World Climate Research Program, um, his uh, mission is really to coordinate um, the international climate research to actually um, coordinate um, the, the big problems that cannot be handled by individual institutions or indi individual nations, but really to make progress um, that includes also the infrastructure, uh, observation, the modeling, and so forth. And, um, we, um, as a leadership, um, meet once a year. Um, we are very proud to be in the home of one of our sponsors um, this year um, to t talk about progress, to talk about the next things that needs to be organized, uh, to talk about evolution in, on the science level, but also on the organi organizational level. Um, this year's meeting is special. Um, first of all, it is our 40th anniversary. Um, so it is really a year of celebration. We are very proud to be here for this inauguration of this new lecture program, I think, at the um, World Meteorological Organization. 
um, uh, to, to be um, yeah, part of it, um, to participate in it. In fact, we have all the members that meet once a year, in fact, here in this room, sprinkled across the room. And if you look around and see somebody who looks like a scientist, he is a scientist and participating in our meeting. Um, and so um, th this year is special, um, first of all, because of our anniversary, but because we are also in a process um, uh, of preparing ourselves for the challenges ahead of time. I mean, really for the challenges of the climate research um, if, of the future and for preparing the information that society really needs to, pre uh, to, to get fit for purpose for the future. And so this is, in fact, a very um, central topic of, of our meeting here this year. Um, and uh, I should also mention that uh, this um, um, the word climate research program sort of moves across the world. I mean, basically, we are not always at the same place. We, in fact, we try to go into the different regions. Um, whenever we do this, we try to connect um, to the local um, institutions, to the local agencies, to the local also uh, uh, research communities. And we are very happy to be here this year um, to actually connect to this region, to our host. Um, but we use, in fact, these events also to learn from others. So we are very happy to have Thomas Stocker here uh, today with us. Uh, next year, somebody else will, in fact, come and give us stimulation about the research we want to do. And I think it's really a very important purpose for us to, uh, to, to use these kind of lecture series every, every year we meet uh, to also educate ourselves and to connect to the, uh, to the local uh, science uh, um, communities uh, to entrain them into, in fact, the international climate research. And maybe with this, um, we give the floor to, I'm not sure, Thomas, or maybe back to the president. Okay, so thanks, uh, Detlef. And uh, finally, let's go to the beef of this uh, event. Uh, Thomas, uh, the floor is yours.